big Xbox Series X reveal has occurred, courtesy of Digital Foundry. Big numbers have been released. But in the grand scheme of things, to the average gamer, what does this change? Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Do me a huge favor before we get into this one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. I am not too proud to ask. So welcome to the medicine, baby. All right, so y'all heard my bumper. Big time specs revealed. Once again on a Monday, it seems like this may be Xbox's routine to give us little dribblets of information every other Monday. Um, two days after this most recent reveal that I'm talking about here, they will be doing a showcase at GDC talking about Project X Cloud and Xbox Series X and how that's going to revolutionize, revolutionize gaming for the Xbox ecosystem. So we're going to be interested in seeing that. But with that being said, let me just show you this real quick, just to give you a taste of what was all included in this reveal. And this is coming to us courtesy of a very great, well-known publication, you know, that your boy himself is a contributor to. It's broadbandbullies.com for all the latest gaming news. Definitely check us out at broadbandbullies.com. So courtesy of them, here's a snippet of the specs that were revealed at the time of this recording. CPU, eight cores at 3.8 gigahertz. Um, GPU is 12 teraflops, 52 compute units. Die size 360.45. Process at seven nanometer enhanced, at seven nanometer enhanced. Memory is 16 gigabyte GDDR6. Memory bandwidth is 10 giga, hold up. That's right, y'all here on the medicine. What the hell am I doing? Y'all know I don't care about these gigawatts and compute units and bibble works. So let's talk about the real deal Holyfield right now. Okay, for those of you that are in the know, that's, those are some beefy specs, right? I do wanna show you something real quick. Let me show you something real quick. The spec that matters on all this bibble watts and gigahertz as it relates to Xbox in comparison to its competitors is this right here. That's what matters, first and foremost. And that's the biggest takeaway that I, I, I took from everything that was revealed. 4K at 60 frames per second, up to 120 frames per second, okay? So the question is, are they saying 4K, true 4K, native 4K, all the way up to 120 frames per second, or are they bumping down resolution? I don't know if that was completely answered. Could have been. There was a lot of information to digest that was released today. That being said, that's the biggest number right there because we already know PlayStation is gonna be working on something similar, baby, even if they are only at 9.2 teraflops, and I use I use only very lightly, do not focus on only, because we know what the hell PlayStation was able to do with 1.8 teraflops versus six teraflops on the Xbox One X when it came to God of War, okay? Don't lose sight of that, my friends. That being said, that's gonna be the, the, the tell-all be-all from the stuff that was released today. I'm not saying this is the only thing that matters, but from everything that was released today to the average gamers I alluded to in my bumper, and maybe it's it just a slither of the average gamer, but out of all this bibble babble, the 2.4 gigabytes of raw, 4.8, all that owls throughput, nobody cares. Can we get them frames? Like your competitors are, are offering. Can we get those frames, all right? And it looks like they're gonna, you know, be coming through with them frames. How, at what levels, we'll, we'll soon see, okay? Another thing that was important and what was being shown today is that the controller, you know what I'm saying? To a degree, it wasn't real, a real big revelation, but they added a share button. And as we all know, sharing this generation has been a big thing in the favor of PlayStation. So it was smart for Xbox to add it, but we heard about that before. Another thing though is reduced latency tech. Now they say that the tech in this game, as far as it re relates to when you press a button and a response from that to your screen, the latency on the screen, 
is going to be heavily impro in, in, improved upon. And that's very important for the simple fact that when Digital Foundry went out with to go see Google Stadia back in March of 2019, they actually found instances where Google Stadia, a sole cloud gaming platform, had better latency than a dedicated device solution, which was the Xbox One X. So that's very interesting. And, it, and because of all that power, that might bog down latency. So they really worked on that, which I think will be important at the end of the day. That being said, those are the positive things to take away from this. Some of the sketchier things, and don't take it from me, baby. You can take it from Digital Foundry. You can take it from some of your biggest Xbox fans that have reported on this news. The more sketchier thing is the external stores. Let me go back. So it will take USB 3.2 external support uh, all the way up to 3.2 which a lot of people may have USB. And it also will take a one terabyte expansion card, as you see right here, which is supposed to match the internal storage. Let me explain to you how that works and why that's some sketchy news. First and foremost, let's deal with the one terabyte expansion. The one terabyte expansion is, is based off of, from what I understand, I could be wrong about this, NVMe um, hard uh, SSD solution. It's not a mechanical drive. It's like the little memory stick hard drive thing if you ever seen them in a computer very fast very rapid i that, that's what i use most of the time in my computers when i'm gaming i don't game off of mechanical drives or your regular hdd drives or even your hybrid i don't do that so it's all nvme baby all right um that being said they have interlaced the guts of the xbox series x with and an internal NVMe drive. It's one terabyte though. And the problem with one terabyte is by the time in a year or two, that might only be two games. <laughs> These games are getting larger and larger. Now they say they have some comp some compression methods that they're working on, but we ain't seen no details of it. So one terabyte may be nothing, okay? As far as your storage space. They give you an extra terabyte via this one terabyte expansion card, which is proprietary hardware. And it kind of works similar to your memory cards. Remember those? Remember the memory cards you would have? Memory cards used to just hold your game saves. Now these are gonna actually hold your games. You know what I'm saying? And if you want all that rapid pack math, all that 60 frames per second, all the enhanced stuff that comes from the Xbox, here's the kicker. You can't store, the game can't be stored on your USB drive, uh-uh. Well, the Xbox, the, the, the Xbox Series X games at all won't work from there. But even your older games, if you want them to have all that, the, the kit and caboodle that comes with the Series X, it has to go on here. It has to go on either the one uh, terabyte drive or the terabyte NVMe custom drive that is in the Xbox One, uh, Xbox Series X. So, huh, Digital Foundry, they was like a little sketchy on this because the reason why that's a problem is NVMe drives at one terabyte right now are retailing for like 120, and those, those are proprietary. What I mean by proprietary is that Xbox is making them themselves, so you can tack on another 25, maybe even $50 to the price that you expect, unless Xbox plans to eat that cost. But we got to find out. We got to figure that out, baby. <laughs> we got to figure that out. If they if they come cheap, like $75 or something like that, boom, goes the dynamite. Okay, then we in business. But if that, if them things is like a buck fifty, you talking about a five dollars $600 console plus another $100, $150, that's not cheap, baby. It's not cheap. So, again, don't be too razzle-dazzled by all these big, big watts of compute units. You're going to see a lot of this stuff similar in the PlayStation. You're going to see a lot of similar output to the naked eye, even from Stadia when they dropped the 2.0. For those of you that are interested in cloud gaming, GeForce Now has ray tracing technology that they're going to implore uh, more heavily with their cloud service. You know what I'm saying? What we care about is like these little individual tidbit things. And the 120 hertz, if it's full 4K, y'all can do that. They were talking about gears. They worked on a, a port of gears that was unoptimized and they got it past 100 frames per second. And they got it at 4K ultra settings. 
That, hey, that's fantastic. You know what I'm saying? If y'all can do that with newer games, that'll be great. But then this thing with the memory card too, you know, you gotta balance it out. So what does this all mean at the end of the day? It means nothing to the average gamer. It's a wash. Why do I say that? I say that because where's the games? The Xbox Series X reveal was so impactful because it came with a game showcase, which was Hellblade. They showed that tech, that game looked fantastic. I mean, it looked realistic. You gotta show this tech with the game. And I'm not saying they shouldn't have done this. I'm not saying that at all. But my Xbox brethren are mad at me. Why don't you jumping up for joy and clicking your heels like the Wizard of Oz for this reveal? Because it's not solidified with the games. What the hell does it matter if you pull out a pinch tent if it's raining, if you don't have stakes to drive the tent into the ground? And in that scenario, games is what drives all this stuff in the ground. So it's great that you pull out the pinch tent, but the average gamer is looking for what? The stakes. And the stakes in this case, again, are what? The games. And until my Xbox brethren understand that, they're gonna be lost in the sauce and they're gonna be mad and they're gonna be confused. So hopefully Xbox comes with the games because they sure as hell ain't getting no pressure from them. But hopefully Xbox comes with the game because if they do and if they can drive all this stuff home, it will be impactful for the average game. And that's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what y'all think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and also the Stadia Dosage. With that said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.